if you're like most business people these days, your IT services are critical to your everyday activity. In fact, they're almost taken for granted. Cloud computing, cybersecurity, network planning, while those things are key, they don't always come easy and they need some specific expertise. Today, I'm speaking with the CEO of an Ottawa-based company that is working with both private and public sector clients to keep IT systems running and secure. Coming up on this episode of Techopia Live. Hello, I'm Michael Kern from the Ottawa Business Journal. Welcome to another episode of Techopia Live. Techopia Live is our regular podcast from OBJ, where we take a, a look at the up and comers in the technology sector, as well as the established players, all with a goal of keeping you in touch with the tech, uh, technology sector and keeping you informed. In today's episode, we're doing something a little bit different. That's because our guest is a little bit different. Quite often, we talk to technology product companies and today, uh, today's guest is much more anchored in technology services. And of course, that's really relevant these days because as we think of technology uh, services, there's so much more important to the functioning of business in a post-pandemic world. Think of cloud computing, think of cyber security, think of IT infrastructure planning that's changed in a remote and uh, a disparate work environment. So it's a fascinating uh, time to uh, be in technology services and looking very much forward to our discussion today. So let's meet our guest. He is the CEO of Decisive Group. Here is Mitchell Karkner. Welcome, Mitchell. Hey, Michael. Thanks a lot for having me on. It is uh, entirely my pleasure. I'm looking uh, forward to digging into uh, this with you. And, and why don't we get things rolling right away, Mitchell? Uh, I'm sure I'd, I'd love for you to introduce yourself to our audience, and I'll tease the fact and, and congratulate you again on your uh, 2022 40 Under 40 recipient. So we're we're talking to a very vetted local business leader here. So congratulations on that award Thank early you. in 2022. But please tell us more. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, lucky enough this year to be nominated and awarded the uh, Under 40. Uh, but I've had a very interesting career building up to that award. So. I actually started my career in the Canadian military out of uh, Queen's University, uh, served as a regular force and reserve officer uh, before coming back to Ottawa and going back to school at uh, the Sprott School of Business, where I received an MBA and then got into the technology space for the last 15 years. So since my time in the military, I've been spending uh, a lot of my time focusing on building products, services and capabilities to serve customers, um, working at companies like IBM, Amazon, and then now Decisive Group. I was going to say uh, that's a little, little bit of a unique background, Michael, but um, I, I yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I have some uh, military members in our family, including uh, both my sons. So it's it's pretty neat to see someone uh, kind of based in that military culture and developing their technology skills. Uh, one of my sons can relate very much. Um, and of course, Mitchell, the, the company uh, that you're uh, that you're CEO of is is growing in leaps and bounds. Is Absolutely. never more relevant than it is uh, post pandemic. So the company again is Decisive Group. Give us a few of the basic details on uh, on Decisive. Yeah, Decisive Group's a fantastic organization, Michael. I joined two years ago, and our mission here at Decisive is to be the digital transformation provider of choice for our customers. Really focusing on our our expertise in data infrastructure, cybersecurity, and cloud managed services. Um, as we all know, in a post pandemic world, there's a shortage of people. There's a shortage of capable people in specific areas. And our organization uh, is, is devoted to providing services and capabilities to customers across the country. And, and give us a sense, uh, Mitchell, uh, uh, in terms of your size, uh, your private company, so I don't expect you to disclose a revenue range or anything like that, but number of employees or uh, the clients that you work with, give us a sense of some of those things. Yeah, we're, we're, we're fluctuating around 75 employees, uh, depending on the time of the year. We do a lot of work with Ottawa students. Um, around 75 employees, but we focus our, our customer base is, is federal government and private sector coast to coast. So we have customers in Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, and then we help out a lot of customers here in Ottawa. Um, 
Sorry, go ahead, Michael. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was I was going to jump in there just because I'm so eager to get uh, get more information and give us a sense. So one thing when I was doing a bit of research on Decisive Group, it seems like you're uh, you do things from uh, cloud computing and cyber and so on and so forth. Just give us a sense of the scope of IT yeah, services that you're providing. Uh, absolutely. So from a from a customer perspective, we provide anything that has to do with the data center. Uh, so whether it's compute, storage, networking. And then we also host a private cloud across Canada with data centers in Calgary, Ottawa, and Montreal. So if we have a customer that has uh, hybrid cloud uh, aspirations, we have experts on the ground that can help. And then we wrap our cybersecurity services. So we have a 24 um, seven eyes on glass uh, cyber operations center, um, which helps protect our customers' data and then also protect our internal footprint here at Decisive Group. Very interesting. And, um... Uh, I want to talk a little bit about cybersecurity. It's, it's been kind of a hot topic here uh, in uh, the Techopia world and, and locally. You know, when I think of a remote work, so people working in a hybrid, working from home, working in the office, has that made things a lot more uh, complicated when it comes to cyber? I, I think it definitely has complicated the landscape a little bit now. There's more endpoints. There's more access for, uh, let's call it malicious actors out there, but that's where decisive group services come into play. We really focus on what we call blue hat uh, services where we're protecting organizations' data, we're protecting their systems. And we have specialists, engineers, and architects here design systems that allow, you know, any intruder comes into your, your architecture, we're alerted. And we have someone awake 24 seven who's monitoring these alerts to say, hey, was that nefarious? Was that just a normal, um, input, output in your system or not. And if it is something nefarious, our team, you know, gets the right people awake, deals with the situation, um, and can really help protect an organization from those scary words like ransomware or things that are even worse than that. And I wanted to have one, one last question uh, before we uh, move on. We'll recognize our sponsor here in a second. But uh, another outcome of remote work has been this kind of acceleration of cloud, right? So that yeah. You know, we used to live in this world, I remember, where there, we had an IT closet and there was a server <laughs> and we had our phone system, by the way, in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the world. And like, that's all gone. I knew that was gone before the pandemic, but that's really gone now. Is, is, is that accurate? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that it's really gone. I think there's different levels of maturity uh, across enterprise customers that we work with. Obviously, we had the hyperscale clouds, the AWS is the Azure's out there, but there's a lot of organizations that have they still operate data centers. They still have a ton of legacy tech debt and they don't know how to migrate. They don't know how to mature their tech stack to get into, let's call it pure public cloud. So that's where Decisive can, can help. Um, we help organizations with, you know, moving data centers around, actual physical uh, close down of data centers then migrating them to the AWS's or the Azure's of the world to ensure that they're achieving their digital transformation aspirations. I lied. I'm going to ask you one last question before. We to this For sure. What's, so I'm I'm picking up that the, a lot of your customers would be public sector or crown corps or or the, or that nonprofit uh, uh, association world. Uh, what's what's kind of the split though between private and uh, generally speaking public sector? From a total number of customers, we're actually about 60 40, 60 private sector, 40 percent public sector. But from a revenue perspective, uh, it's slightly adjusted because we have a lot of large federal government customers that skew the data in a slightly opposite direction, if that makes sense. Well, that's great. Uh, and I've kept teasing our sponsor recognition. So why don't we uh, hear from them now? Uh, one of the great sponsors of Techopia is TD Bank. Here they are. TD's relationship team is committed to your business. They take the time to understand your business and provide banking solutions that can help you achieve your business goals. A dedicated local team allows for deeper customer relationships and better service. They take the time to learn about your business and industry so they can react to changes in the marketplace and anticipate your business's evolving banking needs. Your relationship team can also connect you with other specialists at TD to help move your business forward. And once you're up and running, TD continues to actively manage your relationship, looking for ways to help grow your business. Learn more at tdcommercialbanking.com. Thanks to TD Bank for their support of Techopia. We're here again with Mitchell Karkner, the CEO of Decisive Group. Mitchell, I always like to give people like a really concrete sense of the companies and the CEOs we're talking about. So I, I wanted to uh, ask you to talk about a client problem. So let's 
let's get very real. You help your clients yeah. solve problems every day. Give me a sense of a client problem that you're solving these days. Yeah, the super simple problem, but it's it's a serious one here, Michael. Staff shortages from a cybersecurity perspective. Um, if you look at job openings across North America right now, there's over 700,000 cybersecurity related jobs uh, posted. That means they're not being filled right away. So the agenda at the C-suite you know, across North America is how to protect organizations from cybersecurity attacks. And they're looking to go solve those problems, but they can't get the right people in house. So that's what the CISO group is focusing on by having a managed service capability and, and quite frankly, the ability to hire people here and get them skilled up quickly so that they can help our customers. We're going to talk talent in a second. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you a different question. I'm so tempted to go right to the talent question. But uh, as a CEO, you're not only um, focused externally, you're focused internally. So you're you know, working on your systems and your processes and all the financials and the product and service offerings and all types type of stuff. So as a CEO, I want to ask you about an in, internal problem that you're dealing with today. So maybe share that internal problem. Maybe maybe a few of our uh, people in our audience can uh, learn something here. Yeah, absolutely, Michael. So I, I think a, an internal problem that's probably top of mind a lot of CEOs right now in the world is, is addressing the, the, the return to work post COVID. And, and here at Decisive Group, we take it very, very seriously to protect our employees, protect everyone's health. So we're offering a, a hybrid cloud, uh, sorry, a hybrid uh, return to work option where folks can decide where they do their best work. And sometimes it's going to be at home and sometimes it's going to be at the office. But for me, from an innovation perspective, it's really important for us to have folks at least some of the time in person. So one of the big things I'm trying to tackle right now is how to make our office space um, as usable and digitally enabled as possible, but also fun. Um, how to really make a, 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 a gravity around the office. So one thing that we've done uh, in the last few weeks is we, we actually opened up an employee focused racetrack at the back of our office where it's, you know, these really, really fancy remote controlled cars with jumps that say decisive on them. And we may have some customer sponsors um, and our employees can go race their uh, race cars when they've got a few extra minutes and each business unit gets a car. So the finance team has a car, sales team has a car, procurement has a car, and they race on Friday afternoons. And that's a way for us to create a magnetic, fun workplace without saying, hey, you have to come back to the office because we need to respect our employees' health, right? That's a very fun idea. By the way, I like that word gravity. Creates, I've never heard of that. Create some gravity, I get it, around the office. So so let me ask, when you're doing the race car competition, is, is it the sales folks that are the most competitive? <laughs> Actually, it's our cybersecurity team. Oh, okay. Um, these the, these folks really, really like to race and they like to win. So okay, uh, they're on the leaderboard right now. All right. Well, that's fun. You know, we've heard lots of fun ideas uh, emerging from the pandemic and that to keep people engaged. But I haven't heard that one. So that's uh, that's pretty creative. And and that was the perfect transition, by the way, because. Um, not only uh, did you win a 40 under 40 this year, but your company won an award uh, as recognized by OBJ and the Ottawa Board of Trade, a best places to work in uh, Ottawa 2022. And this is an award uh, that is based on employee engagement surveys. So it's not like a regular uh, application process, although it's a bit of application. It's mostly uh, the recipients are based on uh, results from the employee engagement service. And... Um, you know, this is a very tumultuous time, particularly in the tech sector, Mitchell. We're hearing about general talent shortages. But as you just uh, talked about when you're referring to cybersecurity, um, the shortages are most acute in the technology sector. Yeah. So I would love to hear how you are connecting with employees. We, we got the race car example uh, and how you're connecting and, and staying engaged with employees. Tell us about that. Yeah, first off, it's, it's definitely a big honor for us here to be awarded that uh, best place to work in Ottawa. Uh, it, it, it means a lot to our leadership team. It means, it means a lot to the entire company. But in, in terms of how we're moving the needle for employee engagement and making this a great place is regular surveys of the organization. And this is something that we did throughout, you know, let's call it um, at home COVID. And as we've returned to the office, we've continued to survey. And it's not just, you know, how are things going? It's tell us meaningfully about every part of your job how you're able to move the needle for customers and, and provide feedback on, on things that we can do as a leadership team to make your experience better. And, and, you know, I think you could go to ask any employee here, every quarter we're making changes to, to make sure that employees feel valued 
and they want to stay here and then we want to attract even better talent um, in, in the quarters and months to come. This is a very brave thing that you're doing. <laughs> so, you know, we've we've run best places to work and before that the Employees Choice Awards for 10 or 15 years. And in my discussions uh, with potential applicants over the years, CEOs have told me it's kind of a scary thing to ask your employees for their input yeah. uh, because you're, you're not sure what to expect. And as you just uh, referenced there, Mitchell, if you ask them uh, for their input and they tell you that something's wrong, then you need to do something about it. So uh, again, that's yeah. a brave thing uh, that you're embarking it, it, upon. It does take a little bit of backbone, um, but I think the reality is, is if you were leading with empathy and you're leading with logic and you know basic principles around your organization, it's very simple if something doesn't make sense to say no and stand up and explain why. But normally our employees are saying things that do make sense and there are gaps and we're able to fill them in as a leadership team very quickly, make changes, and it's not going to, you know, win the favor of 100% of the organization, but if it's aligned to our values, our mission, and it, and it moves the needle for a majority of the company, then, then we're going to make it happen. I think I'm hearing your military leadership come to the fore there in, <laughs> in a good, good way. I think I picked up on it. I got a radar for it. So I'm going to ask you one last question uh, to wrap before we wrap up. But I, I just want to uh, plug the fact that uh, it occurred to me that our best places to work uh, and Talent Summit Conference coming up for on October 4th, and we'll be recognizing you and nine other recipients. That's October 4th at uh, Brook Street Hotel. So as we wrap up, uh, Mitchell, maybe you could peer into the future a little bit and uh, let our audience know about where Decisive Group is going, what type of growth they might be seeing, products, services, what's in the future? Yeah, we're going to continue to focus on innovation. Um, we're evolving as our customers' needs evolve. And that's that's been proven since the company's founded in 2010, starting in the data center, moving to the cloud, and then moving to cybersecurity. Um, as customers' needs evolve, we're going to evolve. And that's part of our value prop here, um, making sure that everyone understands that, you know, you don't just show up and do a job. You show up and, and continue to innovate on your skills, et cetera. And do you expect to keep on hiring in uh, in fall 2022 and uh, 2023? We've just finished a big hiring uh, blitz in the last few weeks. Um, and we're going through kind of planning for 2023. Our, our, our new fiscal year start, starts November 1st. So I won't reveal anything, but uh, perhaps we'll continue to start growing uh, or continue growing in November. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, Mitchell, I want to thank you for your time today. I know you're a very busy guy as the CEO of Decisive Group. Thanks for spending some time with us and uh, sharing who you are and, and the company that you're helping to build. Awesome, Michael. Thanks so much for having me on. All right. That was Mitchell Karkner, the CEO of Decisive Group. And uh, as we're wrapping up, I want to recognize some of the other great companies that are lining up behind our Techopia project. Techopia is brought to you by many great sponsors, such as EY, building a better working world. Number Crunch, offering virtual CFO services for SaaS companies. Pearlie Robertson, Hill & McDougall, a leader in business and technology sector law. TD Bank, specialized programs for technology companies. The University of Ottawa, faculty of engineering, creating the next generation of technical talent. Callion innovative solutions delivered with integrity. Techopia is not only a podcast, we post new articles daily at obj.ca slash techopia. If you're on Facebook or Twitter, you can find Techopia at Techopia OTT. And if you're on YouTube, please subscribe and click the bell icon. Thanks once again to Mitchell Karkner, the CEO of Decisive Group. Great having him with us. And we've got some great guests lined up. Um, we're going to be speaking in uh, just a few weeks with our CEO of the year for 2022, Kyle Bratz of Fullscript. That'll be a fascinating uh, conversation. I'll be co-hosting that one uh, with uh, EY. So stay tuned for that one. I also have the CEO of Corel, this iconic local uh, company. And uh, just to tease it a little bit, Corel's changing its name. The Corel won't be Corel anymore. Uh, stay tuned to uh, obj.ca for more news on that. Well, thank you for tuning in, uh, watching and or listening. We hope uh, Techopia is playing a role in keeping you connected and informed. Let's keep building Ottawa's technology utopia. That's Techopia. 
See you soon. Bye-bye.